Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about more advanced usage of the breakpoint built-in function in Python. Uh, I already did another video on breakpoint, so check that out in the description if you want to know more about the debugger. We're not going to go into many details of the debugger, we're just going to be talking about breakpoint today. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so just a quick refresher to show you what breakpoint does. Uh, I'm going to open up a Python file. I don't know. So let's give that lowercase g. Print g, and then maybe it calls f, and maybe we have f, which prints f, and then maybe there's breakpoint, and I don't know, returns a value here. Silly, silly example. If name equals main, exit main, and maybe our main function calls g. So just like a, a silly piece of code like that. And what breakpoint does here is it'll drop us into a debugger if we were to run this program. So if we were to run Python 3, t.py, you'll see that we, you know, print g, then we call f, so we print f, and then we, you know, enter pdb at our breakpoint here, and you can see if we ask where we are, we get this call stack. Anyway, that's that's complete rehash from the other video. Nothing should surprise you here. Uh, this is just the basics of how breakpoint works. Um, and I want to show you kind of two other ways that you can customize this. So first, uh, a useful hint for disabling breakpoint everywhere. Uh, this might be useful if you're like, you know, debugging some, or if you're if you're running something and you're switching back and forth between debugging and you're like, oh, never mind, I just want to run the whole thing. Uh, you can completely disable the breakpoint built-in by setting Python breakpoint equal to zero uh, as an environment variable. So, oops, I don't know where those Ds came from. <laughs> uh, Python breakpoint equals zero, and if we run this now, Python 3t.py. Uh, you'll see that it just completely skips over this breakpoint built-in. So this is this is a way to disable it. Um, leave if you set it to empty. Oh no, if you set it to empty, it just does the default behavior. That makes sense. Uh, empty is the same as unset. But if you set it to zero, it will completely skip uh, the breakpoints. If you set it to something that's invalid, so like I don't know, ASDF, for instance, it will also skip it, but you'll get a, a warning that'll tell you that uh, you know breakpoint was not importable. And that actually brings us to our second point here, which is that you can customize this breakpoint to be any debugger that you want. So by default, it's going to use the built-in PDB debugger, um, but you can use it with any sort of debugger. So if we do, uh, I don't know, let's make a virtual environment, oops, virtual environment VM, uh, activate that and pip install PUDB, which is another debugger that I have used before uh, a long time ago. I actually don't remember how it works, so <laughs> this might be a a figure out if Anthony can quit the debugger sort of situation. Uh, but if we do Python breakpoint equals PUDB dot set trace, uh, set trace, Python will try and import this module and then grab this attribute off of it and then try and use that in place of breakpoint. So if we run t.py now, it should drop us into PUDB. Uh, yeah, cool. I mean, PUDB is a pseudo graphical terminal UI. It uses curses to you know, render a highlighted piece of code. You can see here that uh, this is the breakpoint that we hit. This is the line of code that we're about to run. And you can, I think, step through with S. Yeah, so you can see, you can see the stack always. You can see all the local variables. Uh, you can see all sorts of stuff here, which is pretty cool. Uh, I believe you quit it by pressing Q. Um, but that's how you can customize what breakpoint you want. I don't know if you're using like IPDB or PUDB or I don't know, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of breakpoint, uh, or a whole bunch of debuggers that you can use with the breakpoint built in. Um, but that's how you customize it. I'm actually going to show you one very, very special case where I use this feature, um, and that's to debug curses. And uh, for instance, my text editor is written with curses. So let me CD into Babby. And we don't need to reset. And debugging curses is kind of a problem if you were to just, uh, you know, put a breakpoint anywhere in here. Uh, let's say in, I don't know, the character retrieval portion. For some reason, maybe I'm trying to figure out a bug in there. And if I were to open this in my text editor now, you'll see that the the debugger is kind of all over the place. And you know, if we type text, it gets gobbled. And this is because curses is running. So it, it has control over the terminal. So if Python tries to print to it using the normal stuff, then things just, you know, don't work, don't really work out so well. 
Uh, but fortunately, we can use a remote debugger to handle this. And I'm actually using one, what is it called? I'm using one called Remote PDB. This is basically the, the most basic remote debugger that you can find. Um, and you can just pip install it. And I've written myself a little uh, script, which is just a wrapper around Babby, which sets the breakpoint built in to a particular, um, particular, you know, module here. In this case, it's remote PDB dot set trace. And I also set some environment variables to configure remote PDB. So what remote PDB does is it opens a socket, and you can actually connect to that socket and debug over, you know, <laughs> debug over TCP essentially. And so we set these environment variables and then it just runs Babby normally. So if we do testing, testing debug Babby, uh, you'll see that it kind of hangs here. And this is because the breakpoint has already been hit. So it hasn't rendered the text editor yet. Uh, but then if I do testing debug attach, I'll show you what that script does first. Uh, what this script does is it just tell nets to localhost on port 4444, and I use rlwrap to make it a little bit easier to deal with. rlwrap is kind of a neat little tool that adds readline to things that don't really support readline. So if we do testing debug attach, uh, you'll see that we are now at our breakpoint here. We're actually debugging this process over here, um, but in a breakpoint here, so you can see, you know, self.perf or whatever. Uh, we can step through stuff, so you can see, you know, we retrieved a character, or we're waiting for a character to be typed here. So if I type an A over here, you'll see that we get, uh, you know, the character A was typed on the keyboard, and you know you can continue to step through stuff like that. Um, but anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that's one use that I use the breakpoint or the customized breakpoint for. Um, hopefully that's useful. And hopefully that you know, gave you something something else to think about. But if you have additional things you haven't explained, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.